Thank you very much, Sam, and good morning, everybody. And uh, taking a page from the white uh, TED pad, I have a six-word talk, the rebirth of Akron, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> uh, seriously, uh, let me uh, try to share just a few uh, broad thoughts about some of the things that are uh, creating a, a rebirth opportunity, and then try to throw out just a, a couple of things. And I apologize that I'm going to have to run at the end of uh, my brief uh, few minutes here, because we are trying to do something exciting in Akron that, that I have to uh, run to. Uh, I think universities have a great deal to, uh, a great deal of a role to play in the future of uh, communities and regional economies. But the first thing that we all need to understand is that economies are no longer local, they're regional. And of course, they interact globally, and that's the, the meaning of the global economy. Nobody understands this, uh, so a picture maybe can help. This is a picture of the United States taken at night. And you don't see state lines, you don't see city lines. Instead, you see globs of light. Uh, and try to find Ohio there, and I'm going to show it to you now. I have drawn a little uh, red line around it so that you can tell where the state boundaries is. Uh, but the fact is, uh, quite simply, that when you look uh, at the Earth from a satellite, uh, uh, it, particularly at night, you get a very different pattern of what uh, the geography looks like. And I call this the economic demography of the United States and of Ohio. And as you can see, um, there are no city boundaries. There are no county boundaries, no municipalities. And um, you have very, very prominently outlined here uh, southwest Ohio, central Ohio, and northeast Ohio. And clearly, northeast Ohio is the largest here. And guess what? Uh, uh, Akron is kind of at the center of this. I call it the bullish region because it seems to extend like horns along the lake, and it comes down like the head of a bull uh, right at the center, uh, Akron. And, Indeed, unbeknownst to most of our friends in Cleveland, Akron is becoming the center of gravity for Northeast Ohio. Uh, now, as, as it happens, uh, uh, Northeast Ohio has had many assets that many people thought were, were weaknesses uh, and several challenges. And what we've done over the past uh, uh, 13 or so years is to begin to look at the strengths here, begin to assemble them in new ways, uh, try to overcome the challenges uh, and look for the opportunities that are inherent uh, uh, in any kind of, of challenge. And uh, what we have been doing uh, is to create a guiding framework uh, for us going forward. And it's a framework that says universities have to be relevant, they have to be connected, and they have to be productive. And what this means is that we are tired of hearing that academic is the synonym for irrelevant, uh, that we are tired of hearing that an ivory tower is a disconnected entity, and indeed if it is, it's not good for anything, therefore it would be irrelevant. Uh, and that, moreover, uh, we believe we need new metrics. Okay? Um, I, I'll, I'll mention this now and, and not later. Uh, it is time that we give up the notion that exclusivity or selectivity is a proxy for excellence. Okay? Why is it that the university that excludes more students than it admits and includes only those that are going to succeed is somehow said to be better than a university that demonstrates value added to any student that chooses to come to, it, to an institution. Uh, there are many other ironies in this that, that perhaps we can uh, talk about at another time, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so looking uh, forward, then, our, our model has been one of recognizing that the university is integral to the economy, uh, that it has a role to play in the economy, but it cannot do so in, I in isolation or by doing things that are irrelevant to, to the area. So our, our model of relevance, connectivity, and productivity is about cooperation and collaboration between campus and community to engender continuous success by enhancing the physical and economic infrastructure by leveraging resources through collaboration and building a model in which fundamentally the university becomes an integral component, a robust broad-based platform for the economic vitality uh, of uh, the community. And what this uh, slide simply illustrates is that over the last several years, we have been doing a series of initiatives that indeed have positioned the university very prominently as a, an economic agent in the community. I can't possibly deal with all of them in the few minutes that, that I have, and I know Eric Johnson is going to talk very prominently about the University Park Alliance uh, over here. Okay. Uh, so let me just uh, give you a few highlights here, okay? Uh, clearly, the most prominent thing that you've seen about the university is what we call the, the New Landscape for Learning, a uh, now $625 million initiative that has brought to Akron 
20 brand new buildings, made major additions and renovations to 18 other structures, added 34 acres of green space, planted 30,000 trees and bushes, uh, and in short, created one of the most beautiful metropolitan side of campus in the country. Again, Eric will talk about this, but that's about revitalizing everything else around the university. Uh, you've heard about the uh, Austin Bioinnovation Institute, which is intended really to build upon the excellence and the legendary uh, world-class research in material science at the university, recognize that there's a convergence between physical sciences, material sciences, and biomedicine for a very important reason. We are excellent in polymers. Polymers are materials that have biomedical applications for the simple reason that if you take the water and the minerals out of your body, the rest of you are polymeric structures, including your DNA. Hence, this is coming together very rapidly. And uh, indeed, they are now not only materials that can substitute for body parts uh, in a structural sense, but materials that can functionally substitute for body parts. One of our scientists is working on artificial pancreas that could be a cure for diabetes, for example. Okay. Uh, some other initiatives is that, you know, many four-year universities, particularly those that think they're high and mighty, would never uh, dream of talking to a community college. We've actually formed a, an innovation alliance in partnership with Lorain County Community College and Stark State. Uh, and it's a collaboration that is intending to enhance educational efficiency, uh, to share services in, in the uh, work that we do to be uh, more efficient in that process and to focus on talent development and job and business growth. We're also uh, joined with the Akron Public Schools and uh, the city of Akron uh, in uh, creating a STEM intensive uh, middle school in partnership with the National Inventors Hall of Fame. Uh, with the Department of Defense, and there'll be a, a, um, a panel later this afternoon from Congress here in town uh, talking about uh, how our country needs to address uh, corrosion, how we need to turn the Rust Belt into an area of prosperity, and perhaps we can become uh, ghostbusters, uh, rustbusters instead, okay? Uh, but that's already brought uh, uh, about $20 million to, uh, to our area that wouldn't have been here before. Uh, and guess what? Polymers are the most used protective coating or revitalizing coating whenever you have uh, corrosion. Uh, we're in the midst of forming a regional innovation institute, uh, but let me uh, leave that for the future. But at the core of this has been an entity that we created as a spin-off from the university and really independent from the university because state law doesn't allow the university itself to do some of the things that the research foundation can do. And we created this, in other words, as a boundary-spanning organization uh, to uh, link us more actively to the community uh, and to, to, to industry. Uh, and there we go. So you see, uh, when you talk uh, about economic developments with most universities, uh, they tend to tell you that they, they do an occasional license. That is, they take a piece of intellectual property and, uh, if you wish, uh, allow somebody else to use it for a, an appropriate licensing fee. And occasionally that piece of technology lends itself to the formation of a new company and so commercialization. But that's a small little element of what a university with the multiplicity of disciplines that it has could potentially do to engage with its community. So we've developed a somewhat more robust model, okay, in short, we have really, really deployed the tool chest that a university can be by assembling, whoops, sorry, uh, by assembling assets, uh, by doing licensing and commercialization, some from our own technology, but some by talking with other companies, uh, realizing that they have some uh, technology sitting on their shelves that they're not using that may have a value, and therefore uh, bringing it to the marketplace. In the last six years alone, we've created about 30 companies from our own uh, university-generated technology and about 25 companies from somebody else's technology. We've entered into strategic partnership with a number of multinational companies. We've created an angel network of the Archangels, Akron Regional Change Agents, uh, that has gone from about 30 members to over 500, and that uh, the companies that have presented their business plans have now reported in excess of $100 million in follow-on funding. There's a Women's Angel Network, a Student Investment Fund uh, as well. Uh, we're in the midst of particularly of taking some of the assets in our community that have either retired or been displaced as a result of the economy, uh, create a, a group of senior fellows, executives, who basically are interested and excited about being entrepreneurs 
and they have added tremendous value, and it's a much lower cost model for economic development than hiring a lot of people. These uh, uh, young men and women, some older men and women, uh, work uh, for the opportunity to create value and then obviously own a piece of, of, of that value. As I said, we're working a lot by creating opportunities for students. We uh, utilize our services and provide our services uh, to other colleges and universities um, and have created, because other, other colleges and universities would be <coughs> loath to say that they're contracting with another university, we've created a branch of our research foundation called the Ohio Research Foundation, hopefully makes it a little bit more palatable in that way. And we've also created some global ventures. Uh, we're in the uh, presence of a $33 million uh, uh, training educational uh, contract with the Saudi Arabian, uh, the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia for training their polymer industry workers uh, in, in the future. So this is some of the ways in which we can do that. Uh, the foundation has grown very rapidly, but more importantly, it's received a number of accolades from across the country uh, from, uh, for example, the University Economic Development Association, from the Milken Institute, uh, and most recently, it was only one of six in partnership with our uh, Bioinnovation Institute, one, one of six nationally recognized leaders uh, for speeding commercialization uh, and won one of the I-6 awards from the Department of Commerce. So that's uh, very exciting. So this is the, the Akron model. Uh, let me just say a couple of more things. It's about assembling weak assets to create strengths, organizing uh, entrepreneurial talent into, into new opportunities, uh, identify and coalesce on common synergistic partners. Typically, an organization like a university in the past has wanted to partner only with like institutions. We've partnered with the Department of Defense, uh, uh, with uh, a, a public school, uh, with uh, hospitals, etc. We've been, of course, in the midst of coordinating closely with other regional assets to pursue unique opportunities. Clearly, we've been very, very, very much about the process of expanding the concept of what a university can do, what its product line is, what its tool chest, uh, focused on relevance, connectivity, and productivity. And this is not easy. You have to recognize and resolve the fact that when you try to partner with somebody, there's a conflict of egos, there's the immediate partnering paranoia, there's relationship fatigue, this is hard work, you get tired, you don't want to do it anymore, and you have to learn to relinquish short-term control to gain some short-term, uh, long-term advantage, and you have to become willing to bust through traditional silos. We, apropos silo busters, happen to own the quintessential example of silo busting, it's called Quaker Square Inn. Thank you very much. Thank you.